morning. Hey now, PSW staff, clients, and we have our friends joining us for uh, Welcome to Wednesday's class. It's a short week this week because of Martin Luther King, but uh, uh, the holiday. And uh, yesterday we looked at your film scoring assignment, so get it into me by today for Jules and Jim, a scene that had no music, which is a little odd. You'd think that you'd put music there, but we're going to add our own music to it. Very freeing sense, um, that freeing image of them racing on that bridge that symbolizes youth, right, and freedom, and rebellion, perhaps, and you know, all these great little themes. So today we, we're going to look at Mozart again, because we, we talked about him a year ago, over a year ago, and um, I want to revisit some themes for tomorrow's class, but we need a foundation, so that's why I'm, I'm kind of re-editing, replaying some of these things. Um, and this is so fun I get to do with you guys because now that we have a foundation, we have relevance, right? So when, when I talk about terms, you already know these things because we've, we've talked about them. So now we're getting into the meat. This year we'll be getting into meteor, the meteor parts of, uh, of some composers, songwriters, and, you know, all these, all these uh, crazy guys and, and girls. Um, okay, so let's take a look at Mozart and then... Um, uh, Tomorrow we're gonna we're gonna go into more of uh, more of the philosophy of, of what sounds good to us and what doesn't sound good to us and what why what's that all about? So uh, let's enjoy Mozart right now. Born January twenty seventh, seventeen fifty six. Uh, his father uh, taught him music, everything he knew about music, and. Uh, his sister was also a composer, and the rest of his siblings died. But uh, his sister was a composer, but uh, she, after she got married, she wasn't allowed to perform music. So it shows you that, that you know, we, there's still problems today in the world, but a, a little bit less than, you know, it's a little bit less antiquated than that. So, but he starts uh, um, playing music by the time he's four years old, and... Um, starts playing the clavier and which is kind of like a piano because pianos were kind of invented right around mozart's time it was mostly claviers and and harpsichords and you know those are keyboard instruments um but the piano was kind of brought in a little bit later in mozart's life um and by the time he's eight years old he writes his first symphony so obviously this uh, this guy's got talent right uh he was he was sickly as a child though he had smallpox and uh, he wasn't, he was very, he was about 5'4 in life, so he was a, a slight, short man, um, but had a great sense of humor, supposedly, and, uh, and a weakness for crude jokes, so a lot of his humor was scatological and in the letters that he would write with his sister, and um, so kind of juvenile but funny. So in that part in the movie Amadeus, they probably got that right. Um, along with his laugh. Supposedly he really did have uh, a high laugh like that that was kind of uh, silly. So he was, I think, you know, not immature, but uh, uh, very serious in his work and a little bit um, silly in his life, perhaps. There's probably a better word than silly, but we'll go with that for now. Um, but loved life and was uh, very uh, extroverted, but also suffered a lot from depression too. Um, I think uh, somebody said he, he spent his whole life looking for a job, you know, so he would go to, to these different places and they would pay him for music, but he never, he never really made a great living. And when he did, he would blow all of his money, mostly on fine clothes and gambling. That's kind of where, so, I mean, that's why he died poor. And um, he was just never really good with money. Probably like most geniuses, they're, they're not the most um, uh, well adapted at functioning in the day-to-day -day real world because uh, they're just thinking about their art the whole time. So, so although he was open and honest and lived a, a fun life, I, uh, he was lonely as a child and he traveled a lot. His father would, would take him on the road and he would miss his mother a lot and he longed for affection from everybody that he met and I'm not sure if that was ever if that, that seemed to be kind of a maybe a lifelong struggle until he met his wife um, uh, Constanza and 
they just they were madly in love with each other and, and he wrote the mass in C minor for her and a lot of other music um, but I, I think there was there were highs highs and lows in, in Mozart's life um, again common with artists So in the 1990s, these studies would come out that M Mozart would make could you make you smarter, and you know Mozart for babies, and and this was proven by a lot of medical scientists that that the brain's natural dislike of dissonant music, music that's not really um, consonant, uh, that that the the consonants in Mozart's music indicates the important effect on our cognition. The, the the on on how we process things when when, when we hear consonant uh, melodies that are so um, prevalent in Mozart's music that our brain is actually able to think clearer. Um, um, interesting. I mean, I, I believe it. Uh, I've never done a study, but uh, it, it's become a phenomenon. It's hard to say. You know, if I don't think it, it can hurt to listen to Mozart to make you be, uh, become smarter but um, there's there's definitely something about his music as you can hear in some of these pieces um, it's so soothing and relaxing and what is what makes Mozart such a genius is it's 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 ex exactly the kind of music that you feel like listening to it's perfection I never want to say art is perfect and um, objective but boy when it comes to Mozart at least for me personally perfection is a word that comes it's it's perfect music um, I don't think anybody else's music can be described like that and um, but I don't think I'm the only one that thinks that too um, Mozart's probably personally my favorite composer um, and it's just it's it's it's, it's this yeah, for lack of a better word, perfect music. So, because I do love the the movie Amadeus so much, and like I said, there's you know there's fact and fiction. It's it, Amadeus. I think Peter Schaeffer, it, it's a work of art. It's separate. It's it's using something real, but creating a, another story, pretty much. So that's why I think you know in terms they're they're their own Mozart's work. Uh, life is a work of art, and, and Peter Schaeffer's work uh, is a work of art, separate from that. They're not. So um, I do want to show a scene that's probably one of my favorite scenes in of in, in all filmmaking, um, and uh, and then we're going to talk about why I th I, sh I showed this to you, and I'm going to ask you a question. Yes, there's homework again. So before we watch the clip, let me give you a little setup. The old man um, talking is uh, Salieri, a composer that was very famous, uh, that lived the same time as Mozart. Um, and um, he's talking to a priest, and he's t t telling the priest how much he... Um, well, it's complicated, how much he... <laughs> hates Mozart and how much he loves Mozart because his music is so good. So uh, they're at this uh, uh, concert with the emperor and um, Salieri is trying to find out w which one of these guys is Mozart because um, he's fascinated by him. He's intrigued by him. He wants to know what this little man looks like. Um, and... Uh, he finds out that, that he's fooling around with, well, Constanza, his wife, later, uh, and being silly and making jokes in this little room. And once he finds out that that's, that's this guy, he's like, well, you know, uh, why would God choose uh, somebody so vulgar, vulgar or, you know, um, infantile, childish, immature? Um, so when he, when he um, finds out that that's Mozart, he, he can't believe it. Okay, so um, that's kind of the, the setup for, for this scene we're about to watch. On the page, it looked nothing. The beginning simple, almost comic. 
just a pulse. Bassoons, basset horns. Like a rusty squeeze box. <laughs> and then, suddenly, high above it, an oboe. A single note hanging there, unwavering. Until a clarinet took it over. Sweetened it into a phrase of such delight. This was no composition by a performing monkey. This was a music I'd never heard. Filled with such longing, such unfulfillable longing. It seemed to me that I was hearing the voice of God. Excuse me. But why? Why would God choose an obscene child to be his instrument? It was not to be believed. This piece had to be an accident. But had to be. It better be. So at first, Salieri wants to hate it, right? He wants to hate Mozart and hate his music because, you know, he's a composer too. He wants to be better than him, right? And when he's telling the priest, he's confessing to the priest, um, he's unable to hate it. He can't. There's something so beautiful about it. And if you listen to how he describes this piece, and this is the Grand Partita, uh, one of Mozart's most famous pieces of all time. Uh, when he starts explaining it to the priest, it's like a rusty squeeze box that... Dun, 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 dun. And he said it's almost comical, right? Until what? Until an oboe comes along. Now, why am I saying this to you? Do I want you to go and um, take oboe lessons or um, squeeze box lessons? No. Life is like that, right? It, sometimes life is just basic and comical and just mediocre until something changes. So what will be your oboe? What will be something that makes it, that changes your life? And then a clarinet comes in after that, right? So if we're just kind of floating around, what's something that's going to come to us and make us stand out, make our lives worth living in a way? That's your assignment. What's your oboe? What will it be? Is it falling in love? Is it marriage? Is it religion? Is it simply going for a walk and enjoying the day and realizing that life is precious and that every moment counts? I don't know. I'll think about it too. So. You know, I'm taking the homework assignment seriously, too. I hope you enjoyed the class on Mozart. Genius will live on forever, has lived on forever. And um, we'll see you tomorrow for Tuesday's class.